knew as it wasn't me. Um, I don't know what that means, Laura. Oh, it's you. Oh, good, good. First, I want to thank the Hoboken Public Library for, as always, being so incredibly generous to allow us to have these hybrid classes with folks at home, being able to attend, as well as folks coming in person to this beautiful space here in the main library in Hoboken, New Jersey. It's in incredible how the Hoboken Library supports the arts and us artists. Okay, today we are going to continue our studies and appreciations of African-American visual artists. We're going to look at the artwork of an artist that I've spoken at, about before, either here or at the Senior Center in Hoboken. I rarely repeat artists, but this artist is someone that I admire so much, who moves me emotionally so much. I love her work so much that I feel she bears repeating. Her name is Jennifer Packer. She was born in 1984. So that would make her, I think, 39. So she's still quite young. And she is an up and coming artist. A couple of years ago, she had a solo show at the Whitney Museum, the American Museum of Art, the Whitney Museum. It's unheard of for an artist at that, at this young age to be having a solo show. She is a portrait artist. She mainly paints friends and family members, and she likes to paint them in kind of intimate, relaxed settings. We're gonna start with a slideshow of her work, talk about her work, and then I'm going to review the proportions of the human figure. In our morning class today, we're going to be lucky enough to have our friend and model, Bill Curran, come and pose for us. And we are all going to draw from life. We are, Eileen, your favorite thing to do. And I'm going to give you tricks and tips of the trade. You're going to be doing drawing exercises that I did when I went to art school. These are tried and true exercises that work for everyone, whether you've never drawn before or you are an, a very experienced artist. These exercises work. So here we go with the slideshow first. Yes, Laura, I need to be enabled to share, please. So give us a moment to sort out this technical thingy. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, please. A reminder, everyone, that if you are watching from home, that you need to mute yourselves. I welcome comments, of course, at any time during the presentation, at which point, feel free to unmute. Um, Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Duh. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. What planet am I on? I'm on the I'm on the planet that hates balloons. <laughs> and you know what? I bet these balloons, somebody bought them for a Valentine's party. Oops. And then let go somehow they let go of them. Please don't buy balloons. Okay, we ready, Laura? Nope. Sorry, I'm blind as a bat. Okay, our artist for today is Jennifer Packer. She is an African-American artist. 
and she, not sure where she was born, but she lives and works in New York City. In 2020, she won the Hermitage Greenfield Prize and the Rome Prize. I don't know what the Hermitage Greenfield Prize is, but the Rome Prize is a really big deal. She won it at the American Academy, and it lasts for a full year from 2020 to 2021. And we are going to start the slideshow. Here is Bill. Good morning, Bill, and welcome. So she works in oils. The application of paint is very thin. When you look at her paintings, they, they are oils on canvas, but when you look at them, you think they're almost watercolors because she applies the paint with a lot of turpentine and probably linseed oil because they're very thin washes as if she were using watercolors. They're amazing. They're almost transparent and they have this kind of ghostly feeling to them. Their colors are intense, sometimes unusual choice of colors. And at her solo show at the Whitney, this one was right at the entryway. When you walked in, this was the image, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe this was the image that you saw first. And because of the intense color, it really knocked you flat. The paintings are enormous enormous they are they fill an entire wall this one filled an entire room it was huge you know when you go to the museum of modern art and you see monet's water lilies how they built a special room for it the same can be said for this painting it filled an entire room they had to build walls to enclose it so this is actually a detail of the painting. I think there were other figures on this couch with this gentleman. The proportions in this figure are perfect. She really can draw. It's quite realistic as far as replicating the human figure. However, her application of paint makes it very abstract. The way she's chosen to do this very loose, abstract application of color and paint puts it in the abstract category as well as realistic representation. It's very drippy, right? There are a lot of drips. We lost the image at home. Yes, apparently they've lost the image. What should I escape and reopen? Okay, so we've had difficulties once I'm in the slideshow with me exiting. So let's try. Oh, good. I was able to escape. Should I re hit play? Okay, we're going to exit the slideshow completely. Alice, was your question about trying to see the image? Yes. Okay, so we're going to reshare. And I was wondering if there was a whitewash under her drippy paint. No, no, there is no gesso, no white coating. It's directly onto raw canvas. Good question. Okay, where is my Zoom? Here we go. Bear with me, folks. 
We're going to try sharing. We're starting all over again. Folks at home, can you now see the slideshow? Folks at home. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, let's try again. We're going to enlarge and play. Can you see the first title slide? Yes. Okay, perfect. So here's the first image. I was about ready to go to the next. But Alice's question was terrific. She wanted to know if there was an undercoating. There is not. So it's she paints directly, if I'm remembering correctly, paints directly onto the raw canvas. Hi, Daniel. Plenty of sheets. Make yourself at home. Very loose, drippy wash. Yes, I'm sure. Yes. So Eileen asked, does she drip intentionally? And I immediately said, yes, I think so. I, she may not control the drips, but I think she likes the drips. I think she drips on purpose. Yes. So Packer paints expressionist portraits. So the feeling that she evokes in these paintings, she wants the viewer to feel emotion. And let me tell you, when you get to see them in person, you really feel strong feelings about the person. And what the person, you can feel what the person is feeling when you look at her work. It's intense. It's, it's the person that's painting, not the one in the picture. No, the, the person that she paints the portrait of, you feel what the subject of the portrait is feeling. Oh, interesting. So let's talk about his feelings. <laughs> okay, what do you think he's feeling? And Laura, I am unable to admit while I'm in the slideshow. You can't do it either. Yikes. Yeah, because I haven't. Okay, sorry, folks. I have to start the slideshow again in order to admit Lauren is trying to get in. Sorry, folks. It'll only take a second. Trying to figure out what he's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Now she's gone. I I do not see the admit button anymore. Oh, you got her it. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna reopen the slideshow. <laughs> um all right, folks at home, you can see the slideshow? Yes? What okay. Oh, it was Margo, not Lauren. I'm confused. Never mind. We can see the slide. So what do you think he's feeling? It's hard to tell. Remember, this is a digital reproduction. Can you get a sense of what he's feeling? No right and wrong answer. You're not standing in front of the real painting. Well, red for me represents anger or passion, but I don't. Okay. Oh, very thoughtful. Very thoughtful? Yeah. I think he just woke up. <laughs> Maybe he just woke up. <laughs> From a bad dream. <laughs> From a bad dream? Frustration. Yeah. Frustrated? Maybe we're creating a story here. That's, see, that's cool, though, to make up stories. It's a painting that tells a story. 
I just, the color is extraordinary. When you see it in person, the pink background is really pink. It's such an unusual color. I don't know where I learned this. When I was younger, I grew up thinking that pink and red never went together. But they do. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that you learned that because. I don't know where I learned from. All right, let's keep going. Oh, good. Now we're really back in the slideshow. Good. Okay, so this is someone in their living room. I think that's a vacuum cleaner in the bottom left-hand corner. <laughs> Ter it's a terrible reproduction. Not really. There, you know, there's nothing to replace seeing the artwork in person. Nothing, unfortunately, but... So it looks like she's taking a break amongst the clothes on the wall. And yeah. Students, she's like reading a book and she's trying to chill. Trying to chill. Stuff that's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on in this room for sure. A lot of color, a lot of detail. And a lot of thought in that woman's face. I would typify her as thoughtful. Mm. Again, the proportions are perfect. It's important to pack her to represent the figure correctly, but not realistically. Mm. I love this one. Um, she's interested in authenticity, encounters, and exchanges in relation to her painting pra practice. The models for her portraits are often friends or family members. Mentioned that already. She is very moved by political happenings. She has done portraits of Breonna Taylor, whom, in case you don't know, was an African-American woman who was shot by the police, and also Sandra, Sandra Bland, who was murdered by the police. Other portraits indicate inspiration from Western sources as diverse as Henri Matisse and Caravaggio, as well as Carrie James Marshall and Philip Gustin. I like the position of the hand in this portrait. It's very striking. And I think this woman has a beautiful face. She to me looks sad, but that's my personal interpretation. Notice how large the hand is. Many people in this class struggle with hands. The hand, just as a reminder, is as large as the face. And this is something that even the most experienced artists make errors with. We tend to shortchange the hand. One of the most important parts of the human body, we tend to think of it as being way smaller than it actually is. It's quite large. Beautiful color in this painting. I love those rusty browns. What? You can see her belly button. I'm not sure if that's her belly button, but yeah, it could be. It's in the right place for her belly button. Yeah, this is also, this is wonderful. Love the hands. I love the position of the legs, the way the legs. Many of you, how many times have I spoken to you folks 
It's okay if you cannot fit the entire figure on the page. And here you can see living proof of that. She couldn't fit the feet on the canvas. It's okay. It's okay. It makes for a really interesting composition. It makes for a dynamic movement in the picture. You don't, if the proportion of the figure that you're drawing doesn't fit on the page, it's okay. Don't force yourself to make the figure fit. I also like in this painting, the black outline. It's quite wonderful. And we've talked about how artists like to outline. Think about Van Gogh. He usually used blue when he outlined his portraits. I love how the hands kind of float. They don't even look connected to this person's body. <laughs> and yet it really works with the painting. They're in the right place to be connected to his body or hers, I'm not sure the gender of this person, nor does it matter, but they, they kind of float. Again, the beautiful transparent wash of color, very nice. I like the light on the chair by her head. Yes, the lighting in the background of the figure is very nice. Is it the actual chair being lit by something else or is it, I don't know. Where is the light coming from? I think it's the pillow on the chair is being lit by a light source that we can't see. It doesn't affect the face much, it? It face much at all. A little, but not a lot. But it definitely draws your attention to that area. Yes, it highlights the head and makes the head really the focal point of the painting. It's where you want to look first, which makes sense with her whole concept of making expressive portraits. <laughs> Excuse me. Listen to this. This attests to the fact of She's very talented. She's very young. She's only 39. She is an assistant professor in painting at the Rhode Island School of Design. You don't get there if you don't have incredible talent and skill. Some of it is luck and connection, but I don't think so with her. <laughs> One of the top art schools in the country, affectionately called RISD, the Rhode Island School of the Design, and she's already an assistant professor. Uh, she was an artist in residence at the Studio Museum in Harlem. Many of these young up and coming African-American artists have gone that route. They go to Yale School of Arts, and then they go to the Studio Museum in Harlem and start making names for themselves. I think this one's very expressive. Is that what you want them to do today? Well, it's one of the things, Bill. We're going to tickle you so that you look really happy. <laughs> he didn't hear what I said but say? look at the way she's used color to highlight the face in unusual ways the red the bits of red the bright yellow so you don't have to be afraid to use color it's not always about black and white when you do portraiture. And again, the drips, these are thin washes. 
the way she's let the pattern in the background blend into the clothing that this person is wearing. It's kind of genius. It's almost as if the figure is dissolving into the background. I'm sorry. Or maybe he's emerging or evolving from the background. It could be the other way, Esty. You're right. The eyes are interesting. The way the eye on the left has no light coming through, and on the right, the 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 pupils are looking in two different directions almost. It's interesting. All right, let's move along because I want to do a lot with you today. What? She likes people crossing their legs. She does, and sitting on sofas. She likes painting people who are relaxed, I think, and deep in thought. She likes catching those intimate moments when people are showing their real selves. Again, using color in very interesting ways. One of the things I love most about this painting is you know there's an arm there connected to a hand, but you can barely see it. This is something your eye and brain does for you. You don't always need to outline everything. Your brain fills in what's missing. Yeah, that arm that's hanging down, the left arm, it's there. You know it's there, even though there's no outline. And that's a really incredible device that artists frequently use to draw the viewer in to look closer at the painting. Now, proportionately, it looks like this person's head is way too small for his or her body, but when you look at the boots, I think they're those big oversized furry boots and the pants are puffy pants. So I think it's probably proportionally correct. Again, very relaxed. He slouched in the chair. Again, look how she uses color. It's incredible how she uses color. And the way the, the vertical lines in the tights just draw you in to look at her face and then into the background, I think it's a genius composition. It does look like a Matisse. It does look like a Matisse, yep. Definitely compositionally plus the color. And we've we've talked about Matisse a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. She does love that pink fuchsia palette. She uses it a lot in her work. It doesn't take a lot to show feeling. You don't even have to see the face to get a sense of the, you know, kind of fatigue and this person is definitely weary. I love the colors. You can see. Yeah. Maybe. It's 
So I'm zipping through now, folks. If you have anything to add or say, I don't have a lot more biographical information. She's had many shows, group shows. She had a solo show at Sycamore Jenkins in 2018. 2019, she was in the Whitney Biennial. She had a solo show at the Serpentine Gallery in London in 2020. Um, 2021, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, so on and so forth. Look at that red. Happy Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. You know she's sitting in a chair, even though there's no chair there. Yeah. You can balance on one leg. It's just great. Love the red shoes. I want them. <laughs> great, great color. Look at the purple skirt with the orange lampshade. It's just terrific. Liz, did you get these images off the internet? Today? I did, yeah. This is the second time we reviewed her, and all we seem to do is these paintings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. All right, so that's the end. Um, I want to quickly review the human figure. I wish you guys... Um, can can you put the camera on me, Laura? Because I want to use my own self, and maybe Bill, you can help me. Yes. Yeah, I I want to I guess like do a demo with Bill and I being. Want me to sit in the middle? Well, we're not going to sit. We're going to stand in the middle. So folks at home, give us a second. I want to review the proportions of the human figure, but I want to do it live. Instead of showing the diagram like I usually do, I want to... Actually, I'm going to use Bill. Bill is going to be our living model. And Laura's going to set up that camera over there. I brought a, a tie, a hat, and a scarf for props. Okay. So formal today. Um, Bill, would you be willing to stand on a chair? Stand on, you mean my head? Stand on a chair? I'll hit the ceiling. Oh, that's good. I could do it. No. We used to have those... Those uh, stools. Remember? Sure. Would you get the door open? Hi, folks at home. We're just getting some props and we're setting up the camera. It's not on wheels, right? Once you step on it, it is. Oh, Folks, it is on wheels. Oh, half done show. Folks who are here, you can start getting paper and pencil. Miriam, the paper and pencil is at the back. Um, and you probably are going to need pencil sharpeners today. Yeah, you don't have to do, get them. Is this what you wanted? Yes. It is exactly what I wanted. He's the swinging lawyer. The swinging lawyer. Yeah, it looked like a lawyer. Look with a tie and a hat. Yeah. We're not going to watch. Um, I folks are here. I do ask that you use the drawing paper, not the watercolor paper. Okay. 
those sliders, please. Folks at home too, we're going to start drawing Bill. We're going to do blind contour. Bill, you're going to do action poses. We're going to... Well, however you want now. We're going to do three one-minute poses. And those of you who've never done this before, you're going to watch me with Miriam. Or wait, you're going to watch me by the camera over here. Any questions? And wait up. Don't start yet. Begin. Come over here. No, come over here. Come over here. So blind contour. Stay right where you are. You're in the perfect building. I'm going to draw Mark, the lady with the hat. Yes. So what contour is when you don't look at your feet, you just look at what you do. One, two, three, We might have something for three minutes to go by. This is a three minute blind contour, everybody. Sorry about that. Forty-four seconds. Your paper, actually. Well, how could she sing me? And so you are everybody that's everything for paper. Wrong. So him or me? <laughs> you. <laughs> Stop, everyone. Well, well, Stop. Right, Does it look like her? No. 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 But <laughs> it's forcing <laughs> you to be out. In that time, which is what you need to do. Okay. It is a warm up. What's the right question? Ten minutes. A certain kind of comparison that is. You should sign that down. There was a hundred weeks. Yeah. Oh, you also started it. All right. So sorry about that. That was the three minute blind contour when I intended it to be a one minute blind contour. <laughs> sorry, folks at home. The next one. This is only going to be one minute blind contour. You're going to do one continuous line. You're not going to lift your pencil from the paper. It's going to be a scribbled mess. Who cares? This is what we call warm up and begin. Look at Bill, not at your paper. Mm -hmm. 
you must warm up like any other activity. Warm up will help you to see what's in front of you, and then you will succeed. Do not talk to me. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. I'm Want to explain contour? Yes, this is flying contour. <laughs> no, <laughs> just look at me. <laughs> Well, those of you that know how to do it, I don't care what these drawings look like. Just want you to look at this. All right, another one, Bill. Let's change. I'm glad you're laughing. That's good. It should look silly. No, I'm silly. No. And begin. Well, being silly is a good thing. One continuous line. Don't look at your paper. This is a way to help you relax. Also. They end up just looking at one small part of it. Maybe the wrinkles in his shirt or in his hat. That's okay. It's helping you to focus on looking at what's in front of you. That's my goal. One more bill, please. And begin. You can keep drawing on top of your drawings because it doesn't matter what this looks like. Keep drawing on the same piece of paper. We lost Bill at home. We lost the picture. Sorry, Laura. All right, we're fixing it, Stephanie. Sorry about that. We'll do an extra blind contour. You can see now? Yes. Okay, great. Folks at home, you always have the option too to do self-portrait. Dang, I meant to bring mirrors so that this afternoon we could do that. I forgot. Oh. We're fixing it. Not to worry, folks. Laura's on it. Okay, so Bill, we're going to do another blind contour because we lost. This will be the last blind contour, everyone. Oops, I wait. Ah, stop. Um, I have to reset Bill. Wait up. How do I do that? I don't know. Go. This one's going to be a little bit shorter. Don't look at your paper, Judy. Sorry to embarrass you, Judy, but don't look at this. Look at him. Don't look at your face. I don't care what this looks like. Just look at him, okay? Try and let go of more slush. We're not there yet. That's coming. Try and relax and look at what's in front of you. Oops, don't go on. Right. <laughs> and stop. Ah, okay, so Bill, now we're going to start doing some three minutes of yeah. girl. Yeah. Pose it. 
Let me tell the folks at home, and then I'm going to demonstrate what gestural poses mean and how to do them. So, folks at home, we're going to move on to now three-minute poses, not blind contour, but gestural. So now I want you to look at your paper. You may have time to do erasure, but these are still going to be very fast sketches where you're not going to be able to capture detail, like the pattern on his tie or the buckle on his belt or the shading in the folds in the fabric. You're just trying to capture the gesture or the movement in his body and the proportions of his figure. So those of you who've never drawn the human figure before or who need a review in how to do gesture drawing, I'm going to be standing by Miriam again to show you how to do gesture drawing. Folks at home, is there anyone at home who needs review in gestural drawing? I don't think so. You're all veteran students, folks at home. Okay, you're good to go. All right, Bill, so if you want to drag a chair over for longer poses, you can. If not, you don't have to. And those of you who want review or instruction on how to do gesture poses and gestural drawing, come on over by the area. Just do your piece of paper. Any questions? Eileen, you, you get what we're doing? Yes, no question. So come on over here so you can see. Comfy Bill? Oh, a nice pop. You want to change before I start the timer? Three minutes, I can All right, begin. So gestural poses, we're just trying to capture the movement in his body. When artists do gestural poses, they hold the pencil by the eraser, they're not clutching down here. You want to keep it loose and relaxed. And you're doing very fast, quick sketch. You, see, you want to see the movement of the shoulders, length of his arms, where the hands are going, slope of his back, the fact that his knees are at his wrists. You see the knees? That top knee is the other knee is down by his fingertips. Just trying to capture the movement of the body. And if there's time, then I can go back and start adding more details the neck, the shoulder, the shirt, not five. change the position of my hand and get more control. <coughs> more minutes. Stops. A little over a minute left. No problem. And notice I can't fit the whole body on me. Right, right. And that's quite all right. Legs. Legs should be a little bit bigger. Very quick, no details. 
you're wanting to see the proportion. <laughs> Get it down as quickly as you can. Still aging. Let's see. That's no, not good. This is why I'm small. I like to Don't solve it. Do it big. Yes. Hi, Dario. How are you? Good to see you. You look bigger? Yep. We want to model today. You can move that book that's fine. These are good. Thank you. Papers at the back. We started. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Right. Begin. Begin, everybody. In a difficult spot, Dan, nobody. So you get experience drawing him from different directions. Thank you, Bill. Let's begin. If you don't like the direction he's in, you can screen for a better view. We're still doing gestural work, so you want to keep it loose and free. This is not only loosening up your eye and your brain, but your whole body. Keep it loose and fast. Try not to think about what you're doing. Try not to do that negative self-talk. I can't do this. 
my work is awful. I just did that, didn't I? I did it to myself. It's what uh, artists do all the time. Try not to do it. Just pretend you're a drawing machine. Don't think, just do. You can do it. Just put pencil to paper. Folks at home, okay? Yeah. Is this actually Lauren? I hope it is. Lauren, welcome back. Thanks so much. Good to be here. Awesome. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Yes, it's actually Lauren, Liz. Awesome. I'm thrilled. Woohoo. So we have. Oh, she. And folks at home, I don't know if you all heard me, but there is another class from one to three this afternoon. You can come back. And depending on whether we get new folks in the afternoon, we may not even have a second lecture. If if there's new people, I'm going to do the slideshow again. But if there isn't, we can just keep working. Although we won't have Bill, unfortunately. All right, Bill. So... You're good to keep going? Yes. Okay. So now Bill is going to move on up to five-minute poses. Oh, my God. It's a gift, right? <laughs> Which means you can start with the gestural poses, but now you really have time to play. You can add more details to your drawing. I haven't taught you how to do shading for those of you who've never drawn figure before, but maybe I'll come around and help with shading now as well. Um, folks at home, I think you're all veterans with shading. Right? Anyone at home need a recap or review on how to do shading? You could do a hands up in the chat box, or you could just give me a yell. No shame in review, just so you know. We all need review. All right. Oh, Bill is already posing. So does everybody understand the assignment? Let me set the timer and begin. Now, this is very cool, what Bill is now doing, because we have something new going on called negative space. This is very helpful. If you could see this as a shape, kind of like a triangle, it can also help you to see proportion this figure. But look at this for head length. From the wrist to the elbow is a head length. From the elbow here is a little over a head length. This elbow is right by his ear another helpful measuring tool. So true on both sides, it's a little bit 
by his very tippy top of his ear. So be careful with that. So there is now a slight tilt to the torso. Let's see if you can see that. And Bill's taking a nap. I'm going to do this sit this way. And a bit of And see him in that direction also. And I think doing great. Yeah, see, so the warm-up is helpful already. Great. Be kind to yourself, especially for those of you for whom this is new. Don't forget his neck. His neck. What? This is a long. It's hard. You got nineteen nineteen seconds left on this pose. Well, it's interesting that the longer poses seem shorter, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard posing. Yeah. Bill, this is a great Jennifer Packer pose right now. Mm -hmm. You want you wanna leave this as your next pose? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. So Bill is gonna do this one for five minutes, very relaxed, just like Jennifer Packer likes. And then he's going to take a quick break after this pose. Laura's adjusting the camera. You're welcome. Oh, Lauren, you had some great comments. I'm so sorry that I missed these. 
Really great. Yep. Confidence. Oh. Lauren says you have a smile that lights up the room, Bill. I agree. Who said that? Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. And her Aunt Margot says, yes, he's a sweet guy. <laughs> Oops, I forgot to set the timer. Here we go. You know what? Let me do a little oh, he's going to change the pose. Yep, you just had your arms up, though. Are you sure you want to do that again? <laughs> you can you can protest, Bill. <laughs> How about something more like this, maybe? And maybe turn, because you were faced in that direction. Bill, maybe maybe turn your chair because you're faced in that direction already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. Let's begin. If you don't like the direction he's facing, look at the screen. Begin, everybody. Focus. Focus, focus. Focus. A very quick sketch for start, and then we go back for more detail. If there's nothing else except start to see the proportions of the figure, I'll be happy. Notice the tilt of his body way towards his left side now. Try and capture the gesture. Take away the shoulders completely to the left. Notice where his elbow is. Above the waist.
The gesture you know, yeah, yeah, beautifully good. Really good. Really good. Just You're doing great. You're doing great. You should, you know what, go. Very intense work. Guys, you should all stand up and move a little bit. This is very intense. You're bent over, you're super focused. You need a little break. You're doing great. I like I like this one best. Yeah, that one seemed a little bit. We're warming up. Yeah. Folks at home, we're. They can't hear me. Folks at home, we're taking a little short break. This is very intense work. Uh, Bill needs a break. You need a break. Get up and fill your yeah. arms. <laughs> Jeremy, I thought we were drawing the chair. <laughs> Oh, you can do that, but I recommend you take a short little break. Okay. Oh, gosh. Those of you who are, are more veteran artists, if you want to start working with colored Media now, I brought colored pencils, there's soft pastels, if you'd like, there's watercolor paints. Um, those of you come for, are, who are coming back for the afternoon class, I may insist that you work in color in the afternoon. You can work from sketches that you've done of Bill in the morning to create a more finished. Bill, is it okay if people take pictures of you to work from in the yeah. afternoon? So those of you who know you're coming back in the afternoon, you can take pictures or screenshots of Bill that you can do more finished paintings for your afternoon project. Um, I may post too. It depends. If they're all veteran students, then I'll feel more able to pose and not walk around the room giving help. You let us know when you're ready, Bill. Ready. You ready? Yeah. You ready, steady, Freddy? <laughs> Somebody knocking at the yeah. door? 
Back up, I'm opening the door. I don't want to hit you. you hear me? Oh, Bill is changing his props. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nice. Doing this grayscale with a spark. Come again. Gray hat with a spark. Gray spark. Gray hat with a spark. Yeah. He's changing <laughs> what he's wearing. Five minutes? Um. Well, no, because we're running out of time. So now we're going to go to 10 minutes poses because we're already at almost 11 30. so we're gonna do a 10 minute and then maybe a 15 minute bill okay so now we have a lot of time folks to really start again with the loose gesture outline and then go in for the kill and do more details Veteran artists, if you feel up to it already, go for the color now. You can use colored pencils or soft pastels, whatever is back there that you want to use. Start with regular lead pencil first if you want, and then use color. You comfortable with this for 10 minutes, Bill? All right, let me set the timer. Now I'm really going to come around to offer advice. Folks at home, if you need my help, you know, just yell for me. I just, the one thing about remote teaching that for me is difficult is I can't offer you immediate advice. But if you need my help, please let me know. And then you can share your work. and I can offer advice. Of course, if you share your work, we lose Bill momentarily. I'm not sure how that will work. We'll figure it out. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, as my mother always used to say. Okay, look at where his elbows are. Look at where... His hands are almost at ankle height, but not quite. But the elbows are right at his kneecaps. So you can really get a sense of how far his upper arms reach. We have a lot of foreshortening in this pose, which does make it more challenging. Try and only draw what you see. So you can't really see his upper legs at all. So the trick is to enlarge the kneecaps. Mm. Try and get the whole figure down first. Right under his elbows. Yes. Look at that. Oh. Lisa, this is a one ten minute pose. Nice thing about long poses is you can start a drawing if you don't like it, you can start all over.
Bill has given permission for you to take a picture of me so that if you come to the afternoon class and you want to draw a picture of me in the photograph. Anyone have a bicycle in the alleyway? Oh, yeah, no. You got it. You put it right in the front. Oh, that's all right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, it's okay. Remember, we saw that we saw in Jennifer Packer's paintings, she didn't fit the whole figure on the paper on the canvas. It's okay. It's not a failure if you don't fit everything in. fact it creates a more interesting picture if you don't fit the entire image on the page so don't worry if it doesn't fit it's like coloring in the lines you don't have to color in the line Turn it this way. 
Yeah, I like it. So this is going to be your last close, Bill. When we really, I wanted to do a 20 minute, but I think we're going to do, we'll do a 15 minute. We're not going to have time to share. Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go for 15 minutes. This is the longest pose we've had so far. And it'll bring us right to 5 to 12. Give us five minutes for cleaning. And let's begin. I think you guys are doing fantastic. We haven't done this in a long time. You may be feeling a little rusty and stretch, but the more you do, the better you get. Mm -hmm. I wish we could have a separate light drawing class. We met every week, but no, I'm sure. Begin. Maybe one day in the city of Hoboken gets a community arts center. Located, located where? Noha. That's one of my favorite fantasies. We've been talking about it. Okay, so look at what's happening in this pose. So the left shoulder is slightly lower than the right. It's a little mm -hmm. scrunched in the back. Its neck is elongated and its head is curved. I didn't see those gestural things. So the negative space here is larger than the negative space on this side. Look at the very long length of his legs. It's very stretched out in this pose. You can exaggerate that. Remember, you're the artist. If you feel a need to exaggerate the proportions to get the feel for the pose. It's your choice. Yeah. Express yourself. Focus at home. You're good. Also, you know, you can always send me pictures of your work during the week, and I will get back to you with this advice as soon as I can. Um, also, once we stop recording, those of you who want to hang on a little bit longer, I'm going to share the information about my solo show, which is coming up soon. I will share it on the screen. It's going to be a fun party. Some of you in this room came to the last opening I had. It was nice. And then there's a great show at the Hoboken Historical Museum at the moment, a local artist photographer named John Paul Picard. Mm -hmm. All about Hoboken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
we should go on it. I did. It's the one thing that's way ahead of us. I don't know. I don't know. I just I don't understand it. I don't know what it is. That's definitely um, different way to say it. Yes. But there are others. <laughs> also, if, if you want to see some of my work, it's open to the public and very easy to see at the moment. There is a picture of my work on a banner on Monroe Street, corner of Monroe and 8th Street. A banner? Yes. Yes. A very large banner. A whole row of banners. It's not on a fence. It's a vinyl banner. It's Monroe Street. And Baker, 8th Street. Yes. There was a little they got lost there. Yeah, and here the big space is going to be packed. Then now they are not Yeah. It's my personal belief, everybody, that if you really want to learn how to do something, you can learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'll do it. Right. But what about the way they want to do What about the way they want to do it? What do you do? Okay, the passionately you do it. Passionately. Yeah. You, you do it. I mean, if it's not that important to you, then you don't do it. It's not important to you. Why are you helping? That's it. Except for my design. Almost perfect. It's This is so hard to see that the arms have shape. You see the curve that there is a curve here and a curve here. They are not straight. There is shape. 
Yeah, if you're coming back and you, if you like this pose and you're coming back in the afternoon, I would take a picture. We're not going to have Bill here in the afternoon, unfortunately. I love this. I, I would go around to the front. And Bill, I'm sorry, I'm neglecting you. Let's see how many minutes.
Folks at home, you good? I feel like I, I want to give you all a big hug. This work is difficult. You've all been so courageous and brave. Poor Bill is. I wish I could be with everyone in person. It is, it's very hard to teach when you're not here. It's weird. I can't watch this thing. So, Bill, you have, you're done, Bill. It's done. Yay, Bill. Um, it is time to clean up, folks. I are we off camera, Laura? I would. We're not recording now, right? Oh, we are still recording. Well, as soon as we stop recording, I'm going to put up information about my show. I am so proud of everyone today. Learning how to draw the figure, I've said this before, it bears repeating. It's like jumping off the edge of a cliff and not knowing where you're going to land. Bravo. You did well today. And it gets easier as you go. It really does. So if you are interested, I'm now going to put um, up on the screen the postcard to my show. I have emailed it to everyone, but I'll probably do it one more time at least. And I'm going to share this on the big screen. Oh, I can't share anymore. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Laura. Laura has been kind enough to allow me to share. And if you are interested, here is the info about my it it's called solo duo because my the gallery where I'm showing has two rooms. And usually in the smaller room. Another person has their solo show, and in the larger room, one person has their solo show. But the woman that I am sharing the space with and I, our work looks so good together that we are blending our two shows together, and it's called Solo Duo. Oh, now so? Yeah, and it's at this gallery called Cirrus Gallery. 547 West 27th Street yeah, in New York. The reception is on, on the leap, leap year. It is. If, if it wasn't a leap year, there'd be no reception.